Welcome, this is a lecture on logic and formal languages and in particular on validity in propositional logic. So what is logic? At its core, logic is about the notion of validity. You can say that an argument is valid or invalid. For example, we have this argument that if it is raining, then Sarah is out playing as the first premise and it is raining as the second premise. And then we have the conclusion that Sarah is outplaying. This is a valid argument. On the other hand, we have this argument with the premise that if it is raining, then Sarah is outplaying, and the premise that Sarah is outplaying, and the conclusion that it is raining. And this is an invalid argument. The point here is that Sarah may, might uh, well be outplaying uh, even if it is not raining. Validity uh, can also be expressed as that the conclusion is a logical consequence of the premises. So this introduces the notion of logical consequence as just another useful term which is essentially synonymous with validity. But the core question remains, what is validity? And uh, the point of approaching this question is that we don't want to have to memorize all of the valid or invalid forms of argument. If we instead know what validity is, then we can simply check for any argument whether it is valid or invalid. So we only need to actually to learn what validity is. So what is validity? Well, we can think about this argument again. One suggestion is that this argument is valid because the truth of the premises guarantees the truth of the conclusion. But what do we mean by guarantee? This would have to be specified further. So one approach to that would be to say that, well, it's guaranteed if in every possible world where the premises are true, then the conclusion is also true. But possible world is a metaphysical notion, and not a logical notion. So the final answer that we take to the question of what is validity is that an argument is valid if and only if for every interpretation making the premises true, the conclusion is also true. But then it remains, what do we mean by an interpretation? So that is the task of this lecture to show. And this is a great achievement of formal logic. We can actually give a precise and crystal clear definition of interpretation. Logic is about formal thinking. We can take sentences and analyze their propositional structure. So in the case of the first premise of this argument, this is a sentence saying, if it is raining, then Sarah is out playing. It actually consists of two different propositions. It is raining and Sarah is out playing. And it connects them with this connector called material implication. So therefore this argument can be analyzed as done on the right side. We simply extract the logical form of the argument. Similarly, we have another argument. So the, the first one is called modus ponens. The second one has the form modus tollens. If there's old cheese in the fridge, then I am grumpy. But I'm not grumpy. Therefore, there is no old cheese in the fridge. This is a valid argument. And you can see its form on the right. There are two important uh, uh, ways of uh, analyzing uh, propositions. One is propositional logic and one is predicate logic. Predicate logic is uh, actually the more detailed one. Uh, it allows for more analysis than propositional logic. On the other hand, propositional logic is simpler and whenever uh, proposition propositional logic is enough, then uh, it is um, much simpler to, to stick to simply 
propositional logic. So in the, case, the arguments we've seen so far, these are examples of propositional logic. Um, the basic idea is that we analyze sentences down to the smallest possible propositions. But in predicate logic we go further, we go into the propositions and actually analyze the parts of the proposition. And in predicate logic we do so by extracting each individual predicate as well as the terms. So in predicate logic we have for example the argument that all mice are cute is the first premise and the second premise is that Todd is a mouse and then we can conclude that Todd is cute. And you can see the logical form on the right is somehow more complicated than the logical forms that we extract in propositional logic. So I chose this example because one and three are somehow analogous. It is a similar form of argument that is being used. We also have the example of Bob's kitchen table is purple with the conclusion that therefore there is a purple thing. But in this lecture I am focusing on propositional logic. So what is some validity in propositional logic? This is what we're gonna make precise. And as we saw uh, earlier, um, what this amounts to is making precise what an interpretation is. And so here we give a definition that a propositional interpretation is simply an assignment of true or false to each atomic proposition. And we will see in examples exactly how this works. Given that we have defined the notion of interpretation, we can then simply use the definition of validity that uh, we, we stated before and uh, just insert this notion of propositional interpretation. So an argument is propositional valid if and only if each propositional interpretation that makes the premises true also makes the conclusion true. So here we have an example. The first premise is that the baby is eating or the baby is sleeping. The second premise is that the baby is not sleeping. And we can then conclude that the baby is eating. In this case we have two uh, atomic propositions. The baby is eating and the baby is sleeping. A propositional interpretation is then simply an assignment of true and false to uh, each of these two atomic propositions P and Q. So there are really four cases, either P is true and Q is true, or P is true and Q is false, Q is false and P is true, or P is false and Q is false. So these are the four possible interpretations that we need to check. So let us do this. One simple way of uh, checking whether an argument is valid is simply to make a truth table. So here I've filled in the four possibilities for uh, P and Q. These are the four possible propositional interpretations. And then we have two columns for the premises and one column for the conclusion. So to check if this argument is propositionally valid, all we need to do is to check that in the cases where the premises are true, that the conclusion is also true. So we simply calculate uh, the truth value of the premises given the truth value of the atoms and do the same for the conclusion and then we see that there is in this case only one row where both of the premises are true and this is the second row and we can see that the conclusion is indeed true in this case and therefore this is a valid argument. Let us now see how this precise definition that we have given can be used to make fine distinctions between valid and invalid arguments. So here we have an example. If it is raining, then Sarah is out playing. This is the first premise. The second one is that Sarah is reading in her bedroom. The conclusion is that it is not raining. In this case, in some sense, the truth of the premises actually guarantees the truth of the conclusion. Because if Sarah is reading in her bedroom, then we conclude that she is not out playing. 
But if it is raining, then Sarah is a thing, so it cannot be raining. However, this is not a valid argument. So how do we see this? Well, look at the propositional structure. When you extract the propositional structure, you see that there are actually three atomic propositions to distinguish. It is raining, Sarah is off playing, and Sarah is reading in her bedroom. So, to show that this is not a valid argument, all we need to do is to find a propositional interpretation that makes the premises true and the conclusion false. And now, I welcome you to simply pause the video and uh, find such an interpretation. So, assign truth values to P, Q and R such that the premises are true but the conclusion is false. Here comes the answer. Simply assign true to all of these P, Q and R. The first premise becomes true because if P is true and Q is true then P implies Q is also true. The second premise is true simply because R is true and the conclusion is false because P is true and therefore not P is false. So the point here is that in logic we can assign true to both Q and R even if that is not actually possible. So it is in a sense not possible that Sarah is both reading in her bedroom and at the same time outplay. However, from the perspective of logic, there is no contradiction between these two. We can assign true to both of them. One might say that this is a case of an argument where the conclusion is a metaphysical consequence of the premises, but we cannot say that it is a logical consequence of the premises. Still, of course, we might want to use logic to analyze these kinds of arguments. So in this case, we might say that, well, there is actually a hidden premise. And this hidden premise is that if Sarah is reading in her bedroom, then Sarah is not outplaying. Add this premise to the argument and it actually becomes valid. Again, I welcome you to pause the video and work this out. Show that this is actually a valid argument. Write it in formal notation and check that for every interpretation of the basic propositions giving truth values to P, Q and R that whenever the premises are true then the conclusion is true. Here are three further exercises. The first one is to show that this famous argument of modus ponens is a valid argument using the definition of validity. The second one is uh, to show that this invalid argument that I showed on the first slide, uh, that it is actually invalid. And the third one is about showing uh, that a certain argument is valid but in this case, instead of making a truth table of eight rows, I uh, urge you to see if you can find a simpler solution. Uh, basically, do you really need to consider all of these eight possibilities, or is it enough to consider a fewer possibilities? Best of luck!